to encourage you today with talking about um, the top frequently asked questions uh, destination wedding couples ask. Right. And the purpose of our discussion today about this is that we want to arm you with preparing yourself to answer these questions when you are out there on social media, on your blogs, in video, answering these right. questions, you become the authority, you become the expert, and you become that go-to person that your clients are going to want to right. work with for their destination wedding. You are a person in business. You should be niching and being an expert in a certain area of business, whether it's no matter what you do in business, if anyone's here today that doesn't know why they're here, they're not in the wedding industry, they just are here by accident, but you own a business, this still applies to you. Get your pens and paper. Here we go. Question one is what are the ideal wedding destinations? So now these are not in order. I'm just sharing right. with you. Right. These are the types of questions that wedding couples are asking. What are the ideal wedding destinations? So write that down right. because you need to be able to address that and talk about certain destinations at, and what makes them great for destination right. weddings. What makes them great for honeymoons? Why somebody would go there? What are the benefits? You know, what are the pros? What are the, what are the cons? So, um, question two, how oh, do boy, we I handle see. legalities and paperwork? So this is what they want to know. Like when I go to this destination, is it going to be legal when it's, when it's all said and done? Like how, right. if not, how do I make it legal? So and if I, I would have just looked at the notes. And see. what do I need to, you know, again, take these questions and think about all the things, all the different questions that come from this, spin it around. And, and because you want to be addressing all of these questions, you know, when I, when I show up or when I get married, there, is it going to be legal? If not, what do I need to do? What, what are the legal requirements to get married in X, Y, Z, you know, ABC Island. Right. Um, and if I don't want to do legal, what can I do? Like, so, like in content here, we talked one time about the legal wedding versus the symbolic wedding and what is a symbolic wedding. And right. you need to be able to answer all of these questions because oftentimes it really will depend on the destination that they go to to determine whether or not legal sure. is the way to go um, or if they should do a symbolic right. wedding. So being able to study those things, know those things and start talking about those things. Yeah. It gives people confidence that you're going to be able to equip them, inform them, advise them. This is what they're searching. Right. They're searching. What are the legal requirements? How do I get legally married there? It, will I be legally right. married after I get married in X, Y, Z location? Right. These are the questions right. that they're, they're throwing out there on Google or wherever. And you want your information to come up because you have answered right. Or even question. Facebook groups. They'll do mm -hmm. this in Facebook groups too. Mm -hmm. What is the cost involved in a destination wedding? Having yeah. a breakdown of big, big what question. a destination mm -hmm. wedding will cost somebody yes. is a really great idea. And just also like addressing like why things cost what they do, right? And how people can potentially um, save money, which obviously we know a big part of them saving money is working with a professional who can set up their group the right way so that they can earn free rooms. And then if they earn these free rooms, then it's going to help them save money on this side of the, on the, on the vacation travel side so that they have more money freed up for the wedding side. Like all those things people want to know. And so right. you getting on social, you writing it in a blog post, making a video, whatever it is, talking about costs and how it all works with destination weddings is really, really important because they're also going to ask like, do I need to hire a wedding planner in location? Right. And then how much is that person going to cost? And, and so, and you know, these wedding packages and, right. and all the different things, right? So the cost involved, can we accommodate guests with different budgets? Mm -hmm. So they do yeah. want to know that they have options for, um, for their guests. And so in this situation, obviously, um, you know, there's always that option where couples could choose like a, a backup plan um, resort, which, um, you know, I've done in the past where, hey, if you sure. simply cannot afford to go because we, we chose like a really high end luxury property. And if somebody really wanted to go to the that. wedding, but really couldn't afford it, here's your, you know, your choice B right. for your accommodations, different right. levels, right, right. of um, service. So, you know, if yeah. maybe everybody's booking into this concierge level, but 
you know, your guests don't have to, um, you know, or your guests can just stay three or four nights instead of seven nights. Like this, these are the discussions, right? People right. don't know. We know, but we think that everybody knows, but really everybody can, you know, come <clears throat> and do what they need to. Like if they can only afford to come for three nights and that's, that's how we can accommodate them. So number five for our frequently asked questions, how can we handle guest travel arrangements? Oh, yeah, that comes up a lot. Couples that's probably number three or number get four. get stressed over this. And the moment yeah. that they find out that that's what you do, game changer. It They're is. like, what? There's somebody out there that does that. There's somebody out there that can do all these travel logistics and handle all this stuff and field all this stuff. And I don't have to be in charge of it and answer 3000 yeah. questions from all my guests. No, nope, you don't. So talk about this kind of stuff. So that because that is a deterrent for people deciding to do a destination wedding because they right. think the magnitude of it and the, the logistics of it overwhelms them and they peace out. OK, right. so we got to be out there letting them know that they don't even have to stress over it because that's what they have you for. Right. Another one is what are the best times of year for destination weddings? I know that was one that came up earlier. And yet you should be talking about weather. You should be talking about what people can expect for weather. Yes, you're going to get better right. prices in, in these months and these months, but you also have the risk of blank, blank and blank. But don't worry if you have rain, if you have a tropical storm, this is how this all works. Like right. you need to like, just make sure people know that there's a backup plan. They need to know what the protocol is. Like just share all of those pieces of info. Again, you're right. showing yourself as the authority, as the expert, you're answering those questions. They start trusting that you're going to be able to really advise them. So right. how do we choose the right wedding package? This is a really great um, question that comes up a lot. A lot of it couples is. are get confused about wedding packages. This one, you can literally pull multiple questions from just talking about wedding packages you multiple questions right. that couples will ask like oftentimes couples want to know can i substitute this for that right? right if i don't want this stringed instrument trio um can i substitute it for whatever and people think they can't choose the wedding package because they're going to have more um they think that the wedding package is like tied to the venue itself like I can't go over right. this many people. So you have to talk about wedding packages. You have to talk about venues, venue capacities. And, you know, there's the extra, you know, if you, this is for 30 people, if you have more than that, then you pay X amount of dollars per person. You know, yeah. if you just have to choose a venue that's going to have the, you know, the capacity to host your, all of your guests. So if you have, right. you know, and, and usually most of these places are going to have, a good location for that. The only times that you have real true limitations is when you're getting into the, um, you know, over a hundred people um, for right. some of these venues and their only options, they may only have like the beach as an option. So can we incorporate cultural traditions into our destination wedding, right? People want to know, is this going to be just, you know, a generic wedding? Can we make it religious? Can we add certain cultural aspects? Like what control do we have over the, you know, the different, um, the ceremony and the different activities and the different things that we do. Well, especially if you are a South Asian wedding mm -hmm. special, again, specialties, right? Mm -hmm. Every, the world is specialized. People want specialists. Mm -hmm. So if you specialize in Indian weddings, South Asian weddings. There are so many customs. Any of this cult, extra cultural thing mm -hmm. that you can have expertise about, that you can talk about for, um, destination weddings mm -hmm. for the people that are looking for those weddings at make you more of an expert. Right. And they're going to trust you more. Like we've talked before, specialization, people trust more and they mm -hmm. pay and they pay more for specialization too. Right. Obviously we yeah. talked a lot about our destination wedding and honeymoon content hero. Again, the reason why we write the things that we write and put in that program, what we do is because we know yeah. that those are the things that your ideal client, your future clients are out there Googling, searching for, and they need answers to. So you need to be writing about and sharing these types of answers and topics so that your stuff can be found and your blog post can be found and your video and your TikTok and your reel and your social page can be found. Um, but for those of you who are interested in checking out um, we do have um, our 20k content hero um, dot com website yeah. where you can learn a little bit more about what we have included there. But <laughs>